This program contains subject matter and language that may be disturbing to some viewers. Viewer discretion is advised. My name is Jordan, I'm 34. I would definitely consider myself an alcoholic. I don't feel well. What do you want? I need some alcohol right now. You already have some this morning? Yesterday. You can drink up to a 750 milliliter of vodka in a single sitting. You all right? He has to be helped to do normal daily tasks, and he really can't help anyone right now because he can't even take care of himself. Hi, baby. It's your fault. Seeing Jordan today, he looks like a complete shell of his former self. Jordan had a very accomplished career, starting with his military service. He's an accomplished veteran who served our country. After that, he went into the nursing community. He was a beloved ICU nurse. He fought on the front lines of COVID. It's Jordan. Yeah. What are you doing? I'm fine. No, you're not fine. There you go. Jordan's drinking has caused a lot of heartache and a lot of stress on every member of our family. What'd you drink? I'm fine. Jordan, I don't want to lose you, okay? Yes, ma'am. All right, darling. The alcohol addiction has gotten so out of control with Jordan that I am afraid he's going to die. This intervention, it is his life or his death. So you are feeling like you need a drink yes, right probably now? probably about three like... ounces. All right. So today I'm preparing a monitored amount of alcohol for Jordan every three hours to keep him stable because last night he drank so much that I was concerned he was going to have a stroke. I don't like myself doing this because Phil and I don't allow drinking in our home, but when he is this dependent on alcohol, if he just quits, he will go into seizures, and I can't handle that. So it's better than me seeing him in a state where I would have to call 911 and get an ambulance to come and intervene. Tell me a little bit what's been going on and... Very happy that we're able to do this and hopefully get Jordan the help that he needs. A lot of people, they get addicted because of some form of trauma. So I wanted to find out what your childhood was like. What was it like for him? My parents, you know, raised us the best they could. We never in childhood, like, really wanted for anything. We would go on vacations together as a family. We went to church every Sunday together as a family. We would all sit down together and have dinner as a family. So what was going on at 18? And that's when he joined the Army. During my time in the Army, I met my wife. And overall, it was the best times of my life. I loved where I was working in the Army. And then I loved building a life and a family. I have two daughters, age 12 and 6 right now. I was 100% involved at any second that I could be. I changed diapers, I take them to school, fishing, everything you could do outdoors. I was excited to be a dad. Trauma is experiences that build up. So did he ever talk to you guys about how it was working in ICU during COVID? It took a lot out of him. Yeah. He was the last person that a lot of these people saw. And I just remember him saying that, you know, the amount of death that he was around was really hard for him. 
I think it was very shocking for Jordan to see that he was losing so many patients to COVID-19. And I remember that's when Jordan's drinking went from casual drinks to drinking on a day-to-day -day basis. And it just seems like it's progressively gotten worse. He was telling me that like he would stop off and get three bottles of wine and drink those on his way home just so he could go to sleep. That was his everyday routine. That was a period of time when it was very hopeless for him. I saw the relationship between him and his wife deteriorate. And how long did he work in ICU? Up until nine months ago. <laughs> Jordan had gone to work, just got to work, and his wife called him while he was there on the floor and told him that she wanted a divorce. She just unloaded on him saying, you're never home, you know, you're drunk a lot, and that all the distress that created caused something to happen to him that particular night. Can you go over that for me, what happened that night at work? I can't really say that on camera, man. That's really what made him hit rock bottom. After he, he overdosed, he was not able to go back to the hospital that he was working at. I'm sure he's probably just stayed drunk the entire time to deal with it. And unfortunately now, he's been drinking very hard alcohol as well. Drinks that's half just, a bottle of vodka. I just, that's that's his life right this now? Is, is, since, <laughs> since our brother died, our middle brother, Aaron. No way. So sorry. What happened? Um, uh, in October of 21, we lost our middle brother, Aaron. How did he pass away? The official report is that he died of suicide. Wow. How old was he? 31. 31? Oh my God, so sorry. If he doesn't get help, we will be burying another brother and my parents will be burying another child and then we'll probably be burying a mom right after that. Wow. How are you feeling, Jordan? I'm feeling okay right now at the moment. I'm not highly intoxicated by any means. And they just pulled up outside. Thank you. Fingers crossed. Oh my gosh. You feeling all right? Yeah. Can't feel my feet, but that'll be all right. How you doing? I'm Ken. Nice to meet you. Two. Jordan. Jordan. When did you get here? A couple days ago. So I had the opportunity of sitting down with your family and planning an intervention for you. They just put together some thoughts and they just wrote them down if it's okay, if they could share them. Hopefully a great opportunity for you, but that's all up to you. I'm willing to listen, yeah. Derek, do you want to go? Jordan, I'm here today because at one point in time, you were my best friend. <laughs> Some of the best memories in my life were made with you. <sighs> you and I have grown apart over time. Life has taken us on different paths as we had our families and worked to provide for them. I deserve to have my brother back, and mom cannot bury another son. So mom, you wanna read your letter? Jordan, I am here today because I love you. I remember your childhood, and it makes me smile. And then you became a father, an absolutely great dad. Sadly, ever since the alcohol has taken you over, it has compromised your relationships with your precious girls. It has stalled your nursing career and caused so much stress and worry on dad and I. Every day, I fear that I'm gonna go check on you and that you'll be dead. 
Jordan, I don't want to live this way anymore. Now you need to be here for yourself too. They're all here because they love you. And they're all worried about you because they already lost one sibling. They can't lose you. And they won't. We found a treatment center in Texas, Warrior's Heart. And it's for vets and first responders. And one of the common things that I heard is that therapy doesn't work for you. Typically, yeah, because when people ask me, how are you feeling? I can't really tell you. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't have feelings. No. I mean, everybody flew in here for this. So your sister came all the way from Italy. You want to answer her question? If you are willing to go to Warrior's Heart right now, well, I don't need my stuff. We well, have you your bags packed. Ready? Is there a flight booked? Yeah. As all you have to do is say yes. I want to get well. Anything that you need, Mom will mail you. We'll make sure you get. And as soon as you get on that airplane, I'm going to call the facility, and they're going to call the courts, and they're going to get everything arranged. So they will start that process for you to be getting your girls back. All right, well, fine. Good. Right. Give them a hug. great to be sober right now. Physically feeling great. Mentally, a lot of the clarity is coming back. So uh, so we have a lot of different coping strategies, group therapy sessions, process groups, and then you have one-on-one -on -one sessions with your individual therapist. You know, doing different projects there at Woodshop. They've got a canine uh, facility where, you know, you can train service dogs and you know, bring them home. Looking forward to getting back into the hospital, working as a nurse in the ICUs. Be with my kids. We FaceTime every day. I definitely miss them, but you know, being able to see their faces and hear their voices every day is just an inspiration, you know, motivation to keep you know, moving forward and you know, doing the next best thing.